Everybody that joins late can join late. We've got a lot of the essentials here and everything. Um, as I said, I uh, mentioned just a few minutes ago, I hope everybody is staying safe and staying well. I haven't heard about any club members that are sick or immediate family members. I'm sure that uh, a lot of us have relatives that are in nursing homes and uh, hospitals for other reasons, things like that. And um, the, those kinds of things really uh, make me uptight, but uh, I think we're just gonna have to deal with it the best we can for now. Hopefully things are gonna get better and better. Uh, I do feel like we're on the downswing of this thing. And I'm hoping we can get back to regular meetings shortly. Um, in that regard, um, we do have some announcements uh, pertaining to that, but but first let's go ahead and start. Uh, Chris, you have the invocation four-way test. You gotta turn your microphone on though, buddy. It's a silent prayer. It is, apparently. <laughs> now you're muted. Okay, now you're unmuted, but I still can't hear you. Try the volume. Sounds like the voice of experience. Mm -hmm. No, still not working. Anybody else have an invocation handy? Ready to go? I can do it. <clears throat> go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in Rotary service. We thank you for your many blessings and pray that you watch over us all as we go through this difficult time uh, with, with difficult choices to be made and uh, uh, events that are at least unprecedented in, in all of our lifetimes. We thank you for the opportunity again to gather in Rotary service and, and please bless the service to thy name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair at all concerned? Build goodwill and better friendships. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Anybody bring a flag? Bobby had one last week. There you go. Thank you, Chris. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chris. That was a great effort. Thanks for the assist. Um, I will say that if you're, uh, if you're not speaking, uh, please mute your microphone so we don't get all the background noise. Uh, that would be great. Um, we have several announcements this morning and I saw Billy just check in. Billy and I talked for a long time last night. He is going through an incredibly tough time um, uh, with business and, and working hard, burning the candle at both ends. But he has um, been working toward our service projects. Uh, Billy, can you go ahead and speak to that? Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Sorry, I've missed you the last couple of weeks. Um, like you said, we have we have been uh, fortunately very steady still at work, so it's uh, nothing I'm complaining about. Um, so I have spoken to uh, Camp Carefree uh, and the folks that run that. They have officially canceled all of their summer activities. All of their summer programs are officially canceled, which makes sense. You know, they're bringing a lot of really immune compromised kids there. Uh, they're in close proximity. Kids are not known for being real great at washing their hands and uh, not touching uh, what they're not supposed to touch. So 
Uh, they have officially closed. That said, they haven't, um, you know, they haven't, or they still have projects that they need help with. Hey, Rob. <laughs> hey, Rob. <laughs> Uh, so I they, think we've been hijacked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think Rob. It says it's recording, too. Big face. What a guy. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. You, you can drag his screen over to the left and make it disappear. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so they do have some projects that uh, they can still use some help with. Um, and I think the difficult part that, that – um, Walt and I were trying to figure out last night is how do we get a project done with while we maintain some social distancing. Um, and so that's what we figure out right now. And uh, we're also trying to figure out what type of projects can we do uh, that do not require us to actually be in the same room working on a floor or a shower or whatever project they have there, what type of things can we do from home if we're from our laptops where we can be completely distant from one another? Uh, and then uh, if there are ways to limit the amount of interaction we have and, and work on projects. We're also trying to find projects that are maybe a little bit more timely in uh, the type of work we're performing. So trying to find some projects that maybe fill the immediate needs um, you know, Camp Carefree is always a great cause, but, you know, there's not going to be any kids there this summer. And there's a lot of needs right now uh, outside of outside of that. There's a lot of people in need right now. And so we're trying to find projects that uh, can help fill the immediate need. So uh, a couple questions I have for y'all is what would be your temperature to go to a service project that has say one or two or three other people in somewhat close proximity to you? Uh, and then uh, what would be your temperature for signing up for a project that may require you to be online and, and doing some type of service up there? Um, and then Lastly, if you have any suggestions on service projects that uh, you feel fill an immediate need locally to the people who, who uh, really need it the most right now, uh, send that to me as well. And if you want to chat or send me an email, feel free. Rusty just uh yep. mentioned delivering meals i think that's a great idea i think in general food is probably the 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 biggest need right now so anything that we can do uh to help fill that need i think is great christy um i reached out to you earlier this week and, and I'm, it would be nice <laughs> if we could uh, have another meal packing I, I don't know how many people showed up last friday um it was a it was a bad day for me because I was in the office, but um, I would certainly be up for an all uh, uh, an all club you know meal packing, and I'm sure that they've made you know uh, they're taking precautions over there to keep people socially distanced and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Judy just texted me about uh, blood. I gave blood a couple of weeks ago, and believe me, uh, they were glad to get it. Um, from what I understand, uh, they are still. Uh, taking blood and if we could get enough blood donors uh, we could actually have our own little blood drive so and you know have it have the blood mobile come to us or uh, meet at a church or uh, some other place that has a relatively large room where they can set out cots six feet apart all that kind of stuff uh, Rusty has raised his hand yeah, I just saying I've got a nice facility we could do it if we need to there you go okay um, Billy, why don't you uh, maybe get up with Christy and speak with the Red Cross, and uh, I think those are two good ideas to run with uh, right away, and uh, maybe we can get something going even before we're out from under quarantine, as it were. Nate City's got the cooker, and, and Netcom's got a fairly good uh, rig for um, uh, a cook trailer, so if there's a place we could physically cook and serve, we can do that as well. 
Okay, fantastic. Well, there's some great leads for you, Billy. Um, Rick, you have birthdays and anniversaries for us? Yes, I do. We've got a couple going on here this uh, week. In <clears throat> um, birthdays, uh, uh, Dale Harold. Dale here? He yes. I saw him earlier. There we go. Yeah, Dale had one on Monday. And uh, happy birthday to you, Dale. Thank you. Yes, sir. New and decade. <laughs> How many? What? I turned 70. Whoa, all right. Way to go. <laughs> happy birthday, especially on a big one. Um, and uh, wedding anniversaries, uh, Ken Kinka, are you here with us? Ken's here. All right. And Frank Cheney? I'm here. Too big. All right. We gave you guys heads up last week, so I hope uh, that you came through this week. Happy anniversary. And um, let's see. Uh, heads up. Uh, Mike. Mike Slane, are you here with us this morning? All right. Well, somebody uh, reach out to Mike. Give him a heads up next week. He's got uh, one coming up there. It's a big one, too. Uh, Mr. President. We yes, have absolutely no club anniversaries this week. Okay. Next week, I think you're going to have to give me some extra time. It, it looks like about half the club must have joined on the same day and, and the very same year, too. Get this. May 1st, 1991, we had like a gajillion people sign up on that day. Now, why so many joined the club on that day? I have no idea. It was their charter. Our charter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. On that day. Exactly. So we had several <laughs> join in, and it'll be a delight next week to talk about those first founding members there of our club. And that's it for the day, Mr. President. Great. Thank you, Rick. You're um, welcome. Did Did Lisa make it this morning? Lisa Simpson. She wasn't here last week. Uh, we actually uh, several members of the board and the fundraising committee. Uh, met before the meeting last week, and uh, um, uh, Lisa is uh, obviously relatively frustrated with the state of affairs and the fact that um, you know we would have been having our uh, fundraiser coming up next Saturday. We won't be doing that. Um, as it turns out, we've decided uh, among the board and the um, the members of the fundraising committee that were there to uh, take the proceeds from the fundraiser we will have hopefully uh, in the fall will be a very low key thing again um uh, we'll be raffling off the, the raffle prizes that we already have things like that and uh, each member will be responsible still for 300 dollars. we're gonna support probably just a single local uh, charity that is something that will uh, help the COVID 19 crisis and we're thinking about probably a food bank, the out of the garden project, uh, as we're standing right now. Um, and we may have to cut back some on member charities. Uh, in other words, the, the things that we've given to for years may not have all the cash to do that. Um, Chris, um, you can speak to the fact better that I think we are still on track for our scholarship and everything. Yeah. Uh We've still got to uh, write up the, um, the, you know, the final rules and, you know, obviously the uh, investment portfolio has taken a, a pretty big hit, um, you know, so it may delay funding for uh, one more year, um, you know, but I, I mean, I, I think by and large we're on track. Um, I do have a little bit of uh, breaking news from an executive committee meeting uh, last night, a district executive committee meeting last, last night. night. Um, Walt, uh, I'm not sure if you shared with the club, but um, uh, a couple weeks ago, the district did send out uh, $25,000 to the United Way um, out of the reserves. Uh, it also sent out um, $25,000 to the clubs, which um, essentially, uh, they did it pro rata, so it essentially amounted to um, about $10 uh, per member, um, with the, the directive being that the club spend it um, on food. Uh, it, the uh, news that we got last night, um, Rotary International opened up uh, a disaster uh, relief fund and uh, districts were allowed to um, ask for $25,000. Uh, 
out of that fund and we were approved for that. What we're going to do with that money is um, we're going to uh, run that as a, um, a club matching program also directed at food insecurity. Uh, so I'm um, giving you guys a heads up as a board. Um, you know, if, if you guys are, uh, are able to match, um, you know, an amount, uh, you can uh, get some funding off that $25,000. Uh, the first round of funding is, is going to be pro rata as well. So um, the number is going to be $10 per member. Um, so, it, you know, if, for example, if we're at 70 uh, members, you know, the district will provide $700 to the club. The club will provide $700 and that'll be $1,400 that can go uh, specifically to food insecurity. So be on the lookout for details on that program within the next week. Um, it'll be run like a mini district grant program. Um, so there'll be a very short application, um, very easy to comply with reporting guidelines. You're gonna will that come to me? Yeah, yeah, that'll come to you. Uh, okay, so great. Well, um, I think you can assume that it will be good for a 700 for a matching grant. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Good deal. Especially considering what we're saving on meals since everybody's eating at home yep. on Thursday morning. Absolutely. So, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. The, uh, you know, in, in short order, uh, you know, with, with and you know, the club match, um, you know, this district will have uh, gotten a hundred grand out into the field uh, within a couple of weeks. So that's, that's amazing. Yep. Fantastic. That's, that's great. Talk about a quick response. I'm so happy to hear that. So again, on the fundraiser, um, we will be selling raffle tickets still. We'll be working toward a single food insecurity type charity uh, that's local. So um, should be an easy sell, you know, Somebody here, you want to buy a raffle ticket, uh, it, it helps the food bank of such and such, and uh, it's going directly to them, all proceeds. So it um, shouldn't be a problem for everybody to sell raffle tickets. Um, they, Lisa should be contacting the fundraising committee and hopefully the board uh, very soon with uh, more concrete plans. Uh, Guy has set a date for our change in the guard. That will be June 25th, correct? And we're thinking at Starmount. Um, That's correct. We're, so we're, we're hoping to do it in person. Yes. At Starmount on June 25th, but we don't know. So I would say it's a tentative date. With the assuming everything goes as planned, we'll we'll see each other, and I think maybe in June we can start doing live meetings again, or even sooner. Yeah, believe me. As soon as the O'Henry is open up. We will be there. Um, let's see. Uh, we have time for some happy dollars. Buster, I know you're keeping track of these. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you can collect, you know. <clears throat> Maybe we should just start paying in Bitcoin. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. Transfer idea. with Apple Pay at time of happy dollar. You know, it's pretty fun to come into these Zoom meetings, and I'm sure y'all have all watched the 100-member uh, choirs sing these intricate songs and these orchestras, and then I watch us try to do the Pledge of Allegiance and the four-way test, and it's like, okay, they're working on a different Zoom than we are. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Buster. dollars, baby. Buster, can you hear me? Yes, and I love the beard. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's, there's been a shortage of uh, a run on razors at the grocery store. It's been a horrible thing. <laughs> so I've got a happy dollar. I'll kick this off. Uh, we are so pleased to welcome another veil into the world. David and Morgan uh, uh, had a little baby boy on last, I guess it's on the 13th now. Seven pounds, 10 ounces. Bentley Veil. So, so pleased to welcome him. New edition. Bentley. That's impressive. Wow. And I'll settle up when I see you in person. All right. Good deal. I figured you would name him Worth More or something like that. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Buster. And Mike Andress, that's a nice beard you got going on there. 
and Chris, that's yeah. uh, you look like you normally do. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I have the same razor. Shit to yes. <laughs> Has anybody thought about giving themselves a haircut? Yeah, We're but I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. I'm going to find a black market hairstylist here pretty soon. Yeah, that's right. I'm still giving myself a haircut every day. <laughs> no, you can drive to South Carolina and get one. <laughs> and a tattoo. That's right. If you go to Maryland, you need a letter from your employer to get a haircut. <laughs> a true story. Benefit of being self-employed, isn't it? Or unemployed. <laughs> Well, then you need a letter from your mother. <laughs> Is it possible to be self-unemployed? Yes. yes. That's what I am. <laughs> I have a happy buck there, Grandpappy. Uh, right. Last uh, week, I reached out to the club um, uh, for uh, somebody that had contacts at Elon College or University. And several of you responded, and I just want to thank you all so much. And uh, what a great club. Good deal. Go ahead and give a happy dollar for, uh, can you all hear me? Yeah. For the work that Walt and, uh, Walt and, and our club is doing, uh, and Dan uh, getting the satellite club together. Uh, I had a chance to participate in their meeting, uh, their Zoom meeting on Monday evening, and, and uh, they're off to a great start, looks like. So good work to those folks. Mm. And if any of them are here this morning, I'm glad to have you here. Absolutely. Who's here from the Satellite Club? Not see, uh, Stephanie. And yeah, I'm not sure somebody's called in with an 803 area code. Not sure who that is. Yeah, uh, I don't think that the uh, uh, Zoom link got sent back out, or at least I didn't get it, and I know two others that didn't have sent it on. But I don't think anybody in the satellite got it fresh. I mean, sometimes it's hard to find. So if we try and send that every week and, and include them, it might help. I think Guy sent a reminder with the, the link and everything in it. It I didn't, didn't have. I know two other people that didn't, but I'm I'm using GC Google Groups. I I just I got in because I asked Steve Scott to send it to me this morning. So I got it. I'm sending stuff through the P-mail, so email. I'm yeah. I don't I don't get the Google Group email anymore. So it's kind of hard for me to respond to everyone on that. I understand. I send it, I send it through the P-mail, and if you're not registered in the club or your email's not in DagDB, you won't get the P-mail. All right. I'm there. Uh, I'm not back here. to happy dollars. That's the <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Buster. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, Grandpappy Lewis, I think it's very appropriate for these times. It's something he always used to tell me is that life is hard, but it's a lot harder if you're stupid. So don't be stupid. <laughs> Thanks very much, Buster. Uh, like Ron White says, you can't fix stupid. You can't um, fix stupid. Um, yeah. no, but you, you can put it on Facebook though. Yeah, yes, you can. That's right. <laughs> uh, Guy, would you like to introduce Mary? Sure, um, I'm happy to introduce her. So this is a very appropriate speaker. Mary's a Rotarian. Um, her name's Mary Berg. She's a Rotarian since 2002, so about 18 years. And she's a frequent speaker and trainer around the Rotary world. She's a practicing clinical psychologist and has a vast knowledge of human behavior on emotions and coping. And we've asked her to speak today on the topic of staying sane during the whole pandemic here. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mary. Uh, Mary, before you start though, um, please, uh, again, uh, let me say, if you're, uh, if you're not Mary, mute your microphone um, so that we don't hear the birds and the pots clanging and uh, the wife and spouses yelling and all that kind of stuff. So please mute now and we'll kick back in when Mary is finished. Thank you. Thank you, Mary.
Thank you. Well, thanks. Um, thank you, Mike, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, well, gosh, you guys sound like you're going to be off of quarantine much sooner than we are. So congratulations on that. Stay safe. Um, you know, but if you're like the rest of the world, you're still probably pretty overwhelmed by this bizarre time that we're all living in and uh, maybe feeling even anxious, irritable, maybe emotionally, physically fatigued. Uh, that's what I'm hearing across the board that most people are experiencing emotionally right now. So, so yeah, I'm here to help you create a little balance during these weird times and maybe help you stay a little more sane. Um, so my first tip of the day is regarding information. So normally when I have patients present to me with any kind of a problem, I would typically tell them to gather information because usually information is power. But in this case, and at this point, it's really become information overload. We're just getting far too much information and it's starting to sound like noise. So I would re recommend that you um, scale your information back to just two times a day. I like to start my day with something uh, related to my state or county, you know, whatever's really pertinent to me and my region. That way I know I can keep my family safe, my patients safe, my colleagues safe, and if anything's changed uh, recently, then I'll know what I need to do to, you know, adapt. Um, I do not check it throughout the day and that helps keep my anxiety and feelings of being overwhelmed down. I do check something um, one more time, usually around the end of my workday, and I like to go to a more global resource. Being a Rotarian, I feel like I'm a citizen of the world and have family, uh, family of Rotary all over the place. So I do like to be well informed as to what's going on in the world. So um, those are sort of my two uh, touch base with what's happening COVID-19. Um, but don't check it more than that, especially um, sensational media, social media, that sort of thing. Uh, and my standard golden rule for even during normal times is no news past 7, 7.30 at night. Because your mind really does need to decompress from the day, from the stresses of the day. And when you're inputting negative imagery, negative um, discussion about you know crimes and deaths and wars all that gets into the subconscious and the psyche during sleep and it can actually stress will interrupt your sleep um, it'll cause you to have more REM sleep which is not actually good sleep REM takes away from deep sleep and so um, any kind of negative stressful input later at night will cause your REM sleep to go up and you won't sleep as well so I don't have anything negative in my life past 730 I don't even take phone calls past 730 so um, yeah, pretty, I'm pretty strict about that. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about routine. My second piece of advice, since you're probably working from home and maybe working from home a little longer, still try to stick to an eight hour a day work routine. Uh, I know during the first couple weeks of this, most of us went a little bat crazy. Um, I watched a lot of Netflix, baked a lot of bread, you know, kind of stopped exercising. It was just, it was just overwhelming. So everybody sort of sat around, but this may be our new normal for a while. So I recommend sticking to an eight hour schedule, but if you're like me working from the computer now all day long, uh, I would recommend chunking everything into two hour increments. And at the end of each two hours, take a 10 minute break from the computer step away, go outside if you have a beautiful day. Um, even if you don't, I see one of your members is out there walking with his raincoat on. Good for you. Um, 10 minute breaks every two hours. If you can't get outside and get a little exercise, simply move to another room of your house and do something different that engages your brain differently. So read from a novel, listen to some music, um, do some stretching, anything. And if you can include in even five to eight minutes of exercise, even if it's calisthenics or push-ups or just walking on a treadmill, just five to eight minutes will increase serotonin in your body and your brain, and that helps stabilize mood um, and is very, is very positive for mental health. Now, um, routine also means taking care of yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. So while you've got the stay-at-home order, I would recommend that you actually set a fitness goal for yourself every day and a nutrition and hydration goal. Again, when you're super stressed out, you, um, feeling emotional, depressed, or anxious, your body can actually start to um, dehydrate faster. 
So my recommendation is between 60 and 80 ounces of water every single day. And it's best if you write these types of goals down because they're very easy to just ignore unless they're on paper. And a written goal will, will um, increase your personal accountability and the probability that you'll actually attain it. All right, so uh, let me shift now to a little bit of um, neurochemistry, neuropsychology. So uh, I wanna talk to you about a fun little neurotransmitter known as dopamine. So when dopamine is released into your brain, you feel happy and even sometimes euphoric. And that's what causes people to actually wanna chase dopamine, the euphoria that it can experience within yourself. Uh, there are a few ways that you can prom promote increased dopamine flow or dumps into your brain so that your mood becomes elevated. And the first is with gratitude statements. So I want you to all take a moment and just reflect. And I do mean reflect. Reflect on what makes you grateful right here, right now. Okay, I can see it happening. I'm watching your faces and I can see when you, the reflection became physiological for a lot of you because you've got this slight little twist of your mouth, which we call a grin. You started to grin. When you reflect and really feel the, do, the um, gratitude inside of you, little bursts of dopamine start to flow into your brain. Now, even stronger is giving the gratitude to someone else. Um, sort of like service, how you know how service makes you feel good. It's the same thing when you give away gratitude. So I would like for each of you at the end of this meeting, and maybe you'll decide who it's going to be while we're talking about this, I want you to tell someone else why you're grateful for them. It can be via text, email, phone call, face-to-face. -face. Surprise somebody with a gratitude statement, why I'm grateful for you. And you'll be promoting dopamine dumps in their brain as well as in your own. That elevates the dopamine release. Now the next surefire way to create a bigger dopamine dump, and we're all gonna do it together. I want you to all lean in a little bit towards your cameras and mimic what I do. One, two, three. Big smiles. Keep doing it. Okay, good. We did at least five seconds. So the brain has no idea if a smile is real, forced, faked, or genuine. It has no idea. It just feels the muscles. It recognizes what that is, and it goes, oh, she's smiling. And it dumps dopamine into the presynaptic gaps. And that starts to make you actually feel happy. I do this with my patients who have depression. In my sessions, we do smiling exercises, even though they don't feel like smiling. And I have them do it at home, in the mirror. And this causes new neural pathways in the brain, which elevate mood naturally. So smiling dumps dopamine. And the gratitude, you caught some of yourselves grinning a little. That started it, but when you really smile big, dopamine is it's forced into the gaps. And um, just like yawning is contagious, smiling is contagious. It is so hard not to smile back at someone who is smiling at you. So if you wanna infect some other people with something positive, with dopamine dumps, just smile at them. Drop your mask for a minute and smile and watch what happens. Um, so yeah, so give it away and also continue to smile for yourselves. Now, the biggest enemy or the worst enemy to dopamine is anxiety. Um, the anxiety will deplete dopamine in the body. It'll deplete serotonin. Uh, and the fastest way to become anxious is with what if thinking. So what if this thing goes past May 5th? What if, uh, what if I lose my business? What if someone I know gets sick? What if, what if, what if? It's like standing on a bridge that's not even built yet. It's futuristic thinking. And um, anxiety breeds best when you're worrying about something in the future that hasn't happened yet. Anxiety also breeds pretty well in the past, and that's what I would call would have, could have, should have thinking. Does pretty well with that but it has the hardest time thriving or even, even being alive at all right here, right now in the present, in a mindful space. Because in this very here moment, 
it's that moment's now gone. And now this moment's gone. And now this moment's gone. So it's, it, when you can be more present in the here and the now, anxiety has a really hard time existing. So here's how anxiety works in the brain. Um, in both hemispheres, in your limbic systems, you have this tiny little part of the brain that looks like an almond, and it's called the amygdala. And when you experience fear or worry, your amygdalas light up. And they send a message to the hypothalamus, which then alerts your body with the fight, flight, or freeze response. And you get all of that autonomic nervous response, like sweating, your heart races, you might get short of breath. I get butterflies in my stomach when I get nervous. That's an autonomic nervous response to the hypothalamus and the amygdalas. Uh, there and people who have anxiety, of course, anxiety disorders, panic disorders, they have a problem with that relay system. They have a problem with the amygdalas. So uh, something I do with my patients, and uh, I put work these things into my life as well, that shut the amygdala systems down, keep them quiet, two surefire ways to do that. The first is with deep breathing exercises. And I am going to demonstrate to you what a proper deep breath actually looks like. I think you're going to be surprised at how slow it is. Now, first, a deep breath has to be, you have to inhale through your nose. And then you exhale through your mouth. It can't be the other way around. And in between the inhale and the exhale, you hold your breath. And it's very, very slow. And I like to use my body exaggeration of the body to, to let my brain know that I'm inhaling. And as I exhale, to let my shoulders come down, to let my body know to relax into it. So I'm going to go ahead and show it to you and how slow it is. Okay, here I go with my inhale. I'm full, I'm holding. And exhale. Okay, now I check in with myself. I can feel what just happened there. After every breath, I want you to say to yourself, what is it about my body that feels relaxed? I could actually feel my body relax as soon as I was done. It just kind of whew, goes like that. You'll notice I pierced my lips a little bit as I exhale. That controls the breath coming out, slows it down. The inhale through the nose, you can do very, very slowly if you practice. I'm practiced. I do this every day. That was 30 seconds approximately for one breath. So um, I always tell my patients to do this two or three times in a row. After each breath to check in with their body to ask themselves, what is it about my body that feels relaxed now? So that you get kind of a biofeedback where your relaxation is experienced. Make sure if you try this after this meeting though, to do it in a seated position somewhere because you can get a little lightheaded. Um, this is really oxygenating the body. So um, be seated, okay. Uh, so that turns the amygdala system off. Now the other surefire way to turn the amygdala system off is with bilateral sound therapy. And bilateral sound um, is a treatment I use for people who have anxiety disorders, panic disorders, depression. I use it with anger management, um, anybody who's feeling irritated. It also helps with sleep. And you can use it even just to help with concentration. You can't overuse this and it's good for meditation as well and just relaxation. So bilateral sound works like this. You're going, and I'm gonna give you the download here in a minute so that you know where to get this. But you're gonna be listening to either music or these special nature sounds and you use it through earbuds. And as you'll notice, as you're listening, you hear it in one ear and then the next, and then one and then over here, and then over here, and then over here. It's not in both ears at the same time. And you'll close your eyes as you're listening and you'll notice that your eyes start tracking the sound from left ear to right ear like this. And it happens very naturally. You will not have to force it. And as that's occurring, a brain wave starts to form and it crosses from the right hemisphere over to the left, following the sound left and right over the top of your brains, both hemispheres crossing that midline section. And that brain wave shuts the amygdala system off. 
and it happens between three and six minutes usually. And when I use this with my patients, I usually let them go for about 10 to 12 minutes the first few times we use this in session. And I leave the office because nobody wants me just staring at them while their eyes are closed. And about 50% of the time, I'll come back in the room and about 50% of the time, I'll have a patient who's asleep on my couch after just being plugged in. So um, my favorite resource, and I am gonna share my screen, my favorite resource, is his name is David Grand and he calls his biolateral sound biolateral sound or biolateral music and my favorite album of his is called brain spotting so um David Grand basically um he's one of our forefathers of this and um, he has developed some really good product. I think his product is really one of the best. Uh, so this is whom I use in session with my patients. And you can find this on YouTube, Spotify, uh, iTunes, or you can go, to, if you prefer a CD, you can go to his website, just davidgrand.com, I think it is, and purchase his stuff. So um, I just think his product is outstanding. So I would encourage you after this meeting to give him a try. Um, and see what you think. And again, you can't overuse this. You don't need to be feeling bad to use this. Just, just try it out, plug in, close your eyes, just try a six minute, um, whatever songs you like, decide if you like the nature sounds better or the music and see how you feel. And again, check in and notice what it is about you that feels so relaxed. So my last point of the day is related to decision-making. And, you know, there are a lot of negative things that there are gonna be a lot of negative consequences from this, these weird times, these COVID-19 times, of course, a lot of things that we certainly cannot control. But what we can control is um, our, our decision, our decision as to how we're going to handle the situation. You know, life is not on hold. Um, I see a lot of people sort of acting as if it is, but it's not. Life is happening just as fast as ever. It's just different. So you can either decide to use this time for the better or you can fail to use it at all. But at the end of this time, I wanna have no regrets as to what I did with, with myself, with my time. I wanna have goals that I've achieved, you know, work-related goals, personal goals, fitness goals. Um, I wanna be a better Rotarian at the end of this. I wanna be a better neighbor. I thought I was a good neighbor, but I'm finding out that I could have been a better neighbor. So I've achieved you know, something coming out of this. My vocational service doing this. I have um, spoken now to about 37 clubs and have another you know, 25 to go. So um, decide what you want out of this. Create some kind of a short-term goal and decide how you're going to be better. Do, will we be different? Absolutely. You know, but I think there's going to be a lot of good things that come out from this. Maybe even a renaissance of the human spirit. We're going to value things differently. Um, time with our families will be valued differently. You know, I was born in 1967, and in my generation, um, we ate dinner with our parents every single night. You know, at six o'clock, I went into my dad's office, and I said, Dad, it's dinner time, and he'd come out of the office and sit down. We'd all have dinner together. I'm not sure when that went by the wayside, but it did. But guess what? That's back now. I'm seeing this happen even on Facebook, you know, families posting family dinners together, cooking together. Um, so things are positively changing as well. Um, we're going to value products differently. We'll value the human touch differently. I think we're going to have a lot more people who are germ conscious. <laughs> um, but, you know, even just how you pick things up in the grocery store and touch things will be thought about differently. I'm a hugger, so I can't wait to touch people again. If you even make eye contact at me, I'm probably going to hug you. Um, I miss human contact. So... Uh, yeah, how you decide for yourself. Yes, you're going to be different, but um, hopefully you'll be different for the better, not for the worse. So that choice is yours. Um, those are my hot tips for the day. So I'm going to open it up to questions if anybody has them. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's fantastic information. Uh, everybody, you'll need to unmute to ask a question. I'm sure we've got a couple. 
Yeah, I, and I, I found the best way to unmute yourself is like a walkie-talkie. You just press your space bar and hold it down while you're talking, yep. and then let go. And good one. I I would like to comment on uh, uh, Mary's earlier remarks about smiling. Uh, that is a fantastic piece of advice that absolutely works, as crazy as it sounds. Um, I used to be in charge of programs uh, at Rotary Club, and of course, your biggest fear is your speaker won't show up, you know, and you'll find out the last minute. Mm -hmm. I found out right before the meeting, my speaker called and said, I can't make it. And I thought, oh my gosh. He said, but I have a substitute for you. And she's called the Laugh Lady. And I thought, oh my Lord, the Laugh Lady talking to a bunch of stuffy old Rotarians. Well, I was so wrong. She came, she talked to us about how this impacts our attitude to force a smile, whether we feel happy or not. She had a standing up, throwing laughs across the room. And I tell you what, when we left that, everybody was slapping each other on the back. Oh, oh what a great meeting. So Mary, that is excellent advice and I've practiced it. It works. It does. And I love the throwing a, a laughter across the room. Try that at your next like for real meeting when you're actually in the room. Um, just just start laughing and wa watch. People can't help but laugh back at you or at least smile. It is very contagious. Well, Mary, this is Mike Conrad. I <clears throat> I wish you could be at one of our regular meetings because the energy in the room at 7 a.m. is just incredible. And we enjoy each other's, <clears throat> each other's company. And you, we have to kind of, the president has to kind of calm us down to get the program started. So uh, it, it's a wonderful group to be a part of. Well, I just want to thank you all for being here and doing this. It's so fun and for having invited me. Thank you, Mike. It's always a pleasure to see your sweet face and your lovely wife. I just adore you too. Um, so <laughs> right back at you, sister. Um, I just want to say thanks again. And if you have anything, just shoot it through Mike and he'll get it to me, okay? Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I will say uh, Mike Conrad is correct. It's, it's wonderful. <clears throat> excuse me, I've loved having the mute button where I can mute everybody. And I'm going to really miss that at the next in-person meeting. Um, that's, that's a great feature. And, you know, uh, I think there was a movie about that with uh, a really bad movie with Adam Sandler with a remote control. Um, yeah, if I could pause things sometimes and, uh, and mute, uh, that, that would be fantastic. Um, so at any rate, everybody, don't forget to pencil in uh, June 25th, Changing the Guard, Star Mount Country Club. Um, Guy, do you have anything else to pass on as far as uh, next meeting or anything like that? Uh, you have a speaker already? No, I, I have, everybody did really well responding with speakers. So I actually have Zoom speakers through all of May. I don't know if we'll need them all, but I have them pretty much booked. Fantastic. That's great. Okay, great. Um, I think Billy will be back in touch with me or the rest of the club uh, regarding uh, blood drive, uh, food drive, um, maybe some uh, drive out meals, something like that uh, in the next couple of days. So be on the lookout for that. Again, uh, check DACDB and make sure that your email is correct on the DACDB website. So you will be getting emails from me and uh, other things on club business. Uh, does anybody else have anything good for uh, the uh, for the good of the club? Nothing else. It's anybody? Steve. Uh, can y'all do me a favor? If you logged in by phone, send me a text message or email who you are, because remember, I can't see you. Thank you, Steve. By the way, I want to tell you guys, I actually made a note to myself to mention this. Steve Scott is the funniest guy I know. Um, I, he sends me uh, uh, text and, and emails back with emojis and, and things that are not always completely appropriate, but they uh, certainly fit in uh, with my personality. So uh, 
he is always good for a couple of laughs. And uh, I would encourage any of you guys, um, if you get a chance to buy Steve a beer, I guarantee you he will crack you up. So at any rate, I know that's a, just a silly put on, but at any rate, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again <clears throat> in person. But if uh, not before then, uh, I'll be seeing you next Thursday. Okay. Anybody else with issues, shoot me an email or a text and uh, look forward to talking to you then. And you're welcome to hang around here and socialize if you'd like to. Thanks, Walt. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, Walt. Thank you very much, Mary. Mike. Great, See you guys soon. Great information. Bye, y'all. Hi. Thank you, Mary. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, Mary. Have a good one. Bye. Here. I don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. Where's Lady Mary? Oh, it's down there. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Conrad. Well, hello, hey, Mary. Mrs. Conrad. Nice you, Mary you. How are you? I'm doing good. I see you're out on your beautiful sun porch. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a wonderful room. Where I've never, I've small. never seen it in the daylight, but I do envy you that room. <laughs> well, it's my office. <laughs> Thanks. Enjoyed it. Thanks for letting me sit in. See Mary. <laughs> Bye. Oh, anytime. You're welcome. Anytime. Especially take the edge off a of mic. <laughs> See you, Steve. You guys be careful, okay? Take care, all. You too, buddy. <laughs>